Welcome to this edition of Peak, Peak Performance, Performance Podcast. Podcast with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Podcast. I'm your host, Thor Conklin. Today, what I want to share with you is a system that I developed that will help you make results much easier, much faster. I call it the Action and Results Cycle, or ARC for short. Now, I'm actually going to be sharing my screen, so if you're listening to this on the podcast, you may want to head over to YouTube later and actually see the actual video portion of this and it'll maybe make a little bit more sense. But what I will do is describe for you as we go through as best as I can what's actually showing up on my desktop. So let's head on over to the desktop and I will show you what I'm talking about. The action and results cycle. Imagine a circle and everything that you have is currently within this circle. Sometimes we refer to this as your comfort zone. Everything that you want is outside of this comfort zone or this circle. So the question is, how do you get from what you have to what you want? Well, you gotta take action. You gotta take massive action. So we start taking action. What ends up happening? Well, we start moving and we get results. Now, the results may be the results that you want, they may be the results that you don't want, but one way or another, you're going to get a result as a result of taking action. As you continue, what ends up happening is you start to develop beliefs, and these beliefs will start to determine what additional actions that you're going to take. So imagine a clock where you're starting at 12 with actions, and then you're starting to rotate uh, clockwise, you get results, then you get the beliefs, and then the beliefs lead to what? Further action or further inaction, depending on what beliefs you had associated to the results that you just achieved. Now, this would be really easy if there wasn't something called obstacles. What ends up happening is along the way, as we start to take actions, we run into obstacles, we then get the results, we get our beliefs, and we run into additional obstacles. So, what are obstacles? bad habits, limiting belief, low energy. Now a funny thing happens right here. Between the results and the beliefs that are formed, we have a filter. We have rules and meanings that our brain associates with these particular results, which form our beliefs, which can, which can change over time. If you keep doing things over and over again and you're not getting the results that you want, what sort of beliefs are you gonna form? You're going to say, hey, this isn't working. Let's take sales, for example. If you make 10 uh, cold calls and you get no one to pick up on, you know, on the other side or they all reject you, you may start to form the belief that, hey, cold calls don't work. Well, that's not true. Maybe it takes 20 to actually land something and get some traction on something. Now, what's the first thing that gets us to take action initially? Well, motivation. Now, motivation is a great starter, similar to ether. When you're working on a vehicle and let's say you're doing some repairs on it and you want to get that vehicle started again, many times what you need to do is you need to prime that engine and you need to use ether. It is a very volatile, very explosive, uh, uh, flammable uh, liquid that is used to start an engine. But it only starts, or only acts, I should say, for a short period of time it is not a long-term solution. Now, what are we motivated by? We're motivated by fear, pain, and pleasure. We're motivated to stay away from something, if it's fear or pain-based, or to seek something. Next, if we start taking action over and over again, what ends up happening is we form a routine, similar to going to the gym, right? In the beginning, we have that pain. Oh, I'm out of shape, I'm fat, I've gotta get to the gym. We get motivated to avoid the pain and we want to move towards pleasure and we start taking action. Well, that action, if you keep going to the gym for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days in a row, what ends up happening? You start to form a routine. Next, that routine, if you continue to do it, forms a habit. Habits 
will lead to obsessions. Do you know anybody that's obsessed by going to the gym or, or work or anything that they do over and over and over again? Now, let me ask you this. Is it easier to keep things going when you're obsessed about something versus you're just taking the initial action about it, whether it's just a routine? Each one of these steps, as it builds, what ends up happening is it becomes easier and easier. Next is addiction. Now, I know addiction has, for most, a negative connotation. However, let's think about this just for a second. What if you were addicted every single day getting up to make today the absolute best day possible? What if you were addicted in taking care of your loved ones? What if you were addicted to providing more value than possible than, than people would actually expect from you? Because is it easy or is it hard to keep an addiction going. It's just automatic, right? It just happens. You've become assessed, now you're addicted to it, and you'll do it just automatically. Now there's a next step in this. When you go from an addiction to an identity, it just who you are. This is when life gets really, really easy. When you form an identity, you know, people ask me uh, all the time, they said, you know, it must be tough for you to go to the gym and work out. Not at all. Because what it's become is part of my identity. It's who I am. It's what I do. The two uh, most powerful words in the English language are I am. Anything that follows that, that is part of your identity. As you form that identity, it becomes your standard. This is what I do. This is what I stand for. And when this is your standard, is it easy or is it hard to keep these actions going? What happens when you hit those bumps in the road and sometimes the results aren't what you really want them to be? Do you quit or do you keep going? Now, in your life, in your business, where are you struggling because you're trying to make motivation your fuel to keep going? What are your belief systems? What's happening as you're starting to get those results? Could some of those results actually be exactly the way they should be? But yet, since you just started the process, you're questioning whether those are actually the results that you want. Are those the results that are normal at this point? Well, I encourage you to keep going, to keep after those goals, and start to look at your belief systems and find out if possibly some of them aren't supporting you. Some of them are not in alignment with your overall vision of what you're trying to build.